They call it the Olus in harness racing here. The Kentucky Paturity has been run, of course, for a race for 92 years. And at Lexington, Fancy Crown winning one of the heats and comes in with uh, Bill O'Donnell as the driver. Well, there is a great, great tradition of, uh, of mares winning this race, going back to the great Rosalind in the 1930s. And uh, Fancy Crown probably ranks with them. She is a great trotting filly, one of the fastest uh, trotters in the history of the sport. She won her elimination well, escaping uh, from a little pocket on the rail, getting through, and she's a very, very impressive horse. Well, that's the way they go. Let's go to track announcer Carl Becker for the call. Here they come. No, coins <clears throat> They're off and trotting on the outside. Speed Merchant for the lead between Trotter's arm bro crouch. Down along the rail, Fancy Crown. Away fourth as they trot to the turn is Garland Lobel. Dropped in fifth, Artificial Bait on the outside. Giorgio D6 along the rail, Delvin G. Hanover trailing. As those three-year-old Kentucky Futurity Trotters race toward the quarter mile mark. Trotting with the lead, Speed Merchant by a length and a half. Arm bro crouch tucked in second. On the outside, there goes Fancy Crown. That filly on the move right now for Bill O'Donnell as they trot past the quarter. They're on the back stretch, front panel 29-1, and on the outside, here comes Fancy Crown, and behind her, tip to the outside, picking up cover, Garland Lobel begins to close ground. Fancy Crown has made the top by a nose, by a neck on the inside, Speed Merchant second, tipped out three wide, trotting fast as Garland Lobel, not waiting, he pulls his way to the front, now he leads it by a neck. On the inside, Fancy Crown second, approaching the half, trotting third, Speed Merchant, four arm broke, crouch, five artificial bait, six Giorgio D, seven Del and G Hanover. They roll past the half, 57 and 1. They're into the upper turn, trotting with the lead. Garland Lobel. Here comes Armbro Crouch. Now he drives to the front. The lead changes hands again. Armbro Crouch has made the top. On the inside, Garland Lobel second. Along the rail, Fancy Crown third. On the outside, Speed Merchant making his move. Racing next, Giorgio D. Artificial bait six. Delvin G. Hanover now moving from the back of the pack. Everybody in contention. Three-year-old trotters have just raced past the three-quarters at 127. And they're at the top of the lane. On the outside, Armbro Crouch heads them. He's on top by half a length. On the inside, trying to fight back in the lane. As they drive to the wires, Garland Lobel. And looking for room, Fancy Crown. And she's not finding it. O'Donnell has a ton of filly. Here she comes. She's found daylight. Fancy Crown is going to end it right now. It'll be over. Fancy Crown gets to the lead. Fancy Crown's off stride. Fancy Crown under the wire did not appear to be lapped on, but that's a photo. The judges will decide whether or not Fancy Crown remains the winner of the 1984 Kentucky Futurity in this heat, 155 four fifths. Well, well, what a heartbreak there for Fancy Crown. We don't know yet. The judges will have to decide in this situation what is going to happen to Fancy Crown. It really depends on where she was and where the other horses were at the finish. The judges are going to decide that. She clearly was the strongest horse at the finish here. Again, O'Donnell got himself on the rail here and had to uh, fight his way through. We're going to have to see if there was any interference. He really uh, got himself in close quarters. He's a very smart driver, and uh, this perhaps was the best position he could get himself into, as you see... Uh, Garland Lobel, the other potential winner in two uh, two heats of this race, directly in front of him. Now you can see what uh, what Bill O'Donnell has to do, looking for room for his filly. But when he finally finds a little bit of space for her, boy, he had a lot of filly left there. She is a magnificent racehorse. Let's see if we can see at what point she goes off stride here. She is the filly in the middle. He's wearing the uh, the blue and white in the middle, and there he goes right through. Gets gets his filly through. Let's see what happens with her if, he's, if she strikes herself or just gets excited. Oh, she's in perfect stride here. She's got a lovely stride up. She loses it right there. Uh, she had a couple of lengths at that point. It's going to be interesting to see what they do. Let's look at her again. See at what point she loses her, her nice stride. Very rare for this filly. She never, never breaks. Whether it's excitement or what. No, it's really hard to tell what happened to her there. Arbro Crouch, of course, right behind. And, of course, defending what the judges rule here on the break near the finish line by Fancy Crown after a fine race. Let's go down to the infield and here's Kenny Rice. Thank you, Sam. Fancy Crown, one of her strong points has been the fact that she's been able to turn in those quick fractions late in the race. A lot of times you don't see that on trotters if they are not 
among the top three, four at the 5'8s. You usually don't see them win. Fancy Crown has been able to turn it on. She was able to there, much the way she did against the World Trotting Derby. Uh, Ted Andrews said he thought that she was good enough, that she deserved a shot at the Colts. She got it right there and looked impressive. Also a good race from Ambro Crouch, trying to become the first gelding to win the Kentucky Futurity since 1971. He was also strong there at the finish. Sam? Thank you, Kenny. And again, you take a good look at Fancy Crown. Should have a decision uh, from the judges here momentarily. As again, if indeed uh, Fancy Crown with the break at the at the finish line is not the winner, we would of course have to have uh, still another race off before the 92nd Kentucky Futurity is decided. We're going to continue with more of our coverage from the beautiful Red Mile here in Lexington, Kentucky on the Breeders' Crown. Right now, let's pause for an important message. This is ESPN, your total sports network. ESPN in college football, that's the winning combination. And coming up for you live Saterday at noon Eastern Daylight Time, you'll find the Terrapins of Maryland going against the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Don't forget, may not be seen in some areas, but we'll begin at 12 noon with Jim Thacker and also Howard Snellenberger, the former head coach of the Miami Hurricanes, the national champions of last year. College football, Maryland, Penn State, this Saturday. There is still a great deal of conjecture on what has happened here at the Red Mile. As we take a look one more time, Sharon, there's a very interesting finish to this race, of course, with Fancy Crown looking as if it is the apparent winner, but breaking just before the finish, and pick up the ride by Bill O'Donnell. The only thing we can think of right here is this is a very, very good gated filly who doesn't go off stride. The only thing we can think of is that O'Donnell pulls back on the reins a little bit and, and has been hitting her, and maybe he confused his filly. Who knows? I mean, she was clearly the best uh, at the end of this race. Um, we're going to wait and see whether she becomes the winner of this race. Strictly speaking, she's apparently not in violation of the braking rule, although she clearly was not on the trot at the finish. She was clear of the other horse by a length and a half to two lengths. So there she is. She doesn't know if she's won yet. Bill O'Donnell looking a little disgusted, but he did uh, direct his filly fairly close to the winner's circle, so maybe he thinks uh, uh, he's going to make it. We're still waiting to see. She's walking around in circles. Quite There's a, a lot of family going on as far as the training of various horses as we wait the decision on just exactly what they're going to do in the Kentucky Paturity, at least, to see if we have another one. A lot of family, with the Simpsons being one of the most prominent of the training brothers and family here the at Lexington. Second. And Giorgio D., one of the favorites, also coming in, finishing as the show horse. 155-4, and four, that, by the way, is for a trotting filly of three years of age. Here's a track record here at the Red Mile. 